title of the talk, the video, is Levels of Measurement. Um, it's going to take a minute before going there to emphasize how really important it is that you get this. Wrap your head around it and be able to look at a variable, which you introduced last time, and say at what level it, it is measured. And I'm going to introduce the different kinds. Credit my, up here to a fellow named Warren Sorrell that document he wrote is in your, your, your materials. It's more sophisticated than other, other references that I've included and, and speaks of things that typically aren't in textbooks. It's a very deep uh, issue. It's kind of part philosophical uh, in a sense. We're talking here about measurement theory and um, the different levels at which different kinds of variables are, are measured. Why it's important from a practical standpoint of performance in the class is because once we get past this, we will assume that you are able to recognize um, the approximate level of measurement associated with the variable when you hear how it's put together uh, and it's reported. In general, levels of measurement is about distance on measures. It's about categories uh, on measures. It's about intervals uh, between categories. And at the base of it all uh, is the question of whether numeric rankings matter at all. And we're going to start now with the nominal level, um, the nominal level of measurement, and make the point that we give something a number. I've given here a number under OVS for each name. There is no name repeated. Everybody has their own number. The same is true over here on ID number. Everybody has their own number. In the spreadsheet um, for this class, I can work with the ID number and add new information. You put your ID number on your test, and I score the test, and I put in a new test grade. The ID number identifies you. The number itself is meaningless relative to other numbers on the list. For example, 992 uh, it is, is not greater or less uh, than 911. It's simply different. And this is the definition of a nominal level measure. A nominal level measure distinguishes a qualitative attribute uh, in its categories, one from the other. You can assign numbers for convenience sake in a spreadsheet or a data set that you load in R. Uh, but it is convenience only, and the, the numbers themselves have no meaning. I have two examples. First is religion on a survey. We're really interested in religion and politics, right? So on a survey, I could have people identify their religious preference, picking from a list that might include Protestant, Catholic, or in all the non-Christian versions too, uh, Islam, uh, Judaism, uh, Buddhism, so forth, and sort of catch-all category other um, or atheists. I could include all kinds of things on the list and associated with those names on the list. I could um, I could attach numbers. One Catholic, two Protestant, uh, three Buddhist, four, uh, four Judaism, five Islam. Five is not five times greater than one. It's not five units greater than one. Five has nothing to do with one. It's only the quality underneath that counts. I'm going to do a quick camera check here. Be right back. I will almost certainly forget to edit that. Forget to edit that out. So uh, I apologize. I heard strange things. Um, I got through nominal. The, uh, I gave you the example of religion. I'll give you another one, sort of from recent history, a blast from the past, 2012, the early part of the year. How about these names? Rick Perry, John Huntsman, uh, Newt Gingrich, Michelle Bachman, Rick Santorum, Mitt Romney, Herman Cain, Ron Paul, and probably somebody you've never heard of, a former governor of New Mexico, Gary Johnson. Who are those characters? Those are characters who competed uh, last year in Republican primaries uh, across the country, various states across the country. And we might be interested 
and building a variable associated with individuals in a state, for example, like New Hampshire, where the nation's first primary is every four years. So I had a survey uh, from, sort of exit poll survey of New Hampshire Republican Party primary participants. We might be interested, remember the dependent variable, why? In building a variable that scores vote choice, um, vote choice from among a list uh, of Republicans. And so you would mark one on our survey if you voted for Rick Perry, mark six if you voted for Mitt Romney, uh, and so forth. And those numbers we could enter into a spreadsheet and they would categorically distinguish um, in a qualitative way uh, differences in voting behavior. And it could be interesting and something that we want to explain. But that's a nominal level measure. The numbers, the numbers mean nothing. Uh, if Mitt Romney is six, it doesn't mean he is six units different or more extreme on any dimension uh, than, than Rick Perry, who we might have scored, we might have scored one. Ordinal measures step up into, actually ordinal measures are easy to explain because this is the term that is what it actually says. Uh, categories on an ordinal measure, write this down, are ordered. Uh, they distinguish more of something from less of something as you move from category to category. A survey measure, um, like partisanship, I've scored it here, one, two, three, we can score it more fine grain, and it's very common for scholars to do this who study partisanship to study it on a scale that measures from one to seven. In this sense, the way I've ordered the categories, the extent to which people identify with the Republican Party. At the extreme here, there's none. They're identifying with the other party. Uh, a little closer to the Republicans here, uh, and in a particular order, uh, closer still here. We're talking about uh, degrees of things that are being distinguished. The trick to ordered categories, the limitation, is that we don't know the distance between 1 and 2 is equal to the distance between 2 and 3. All that we know is that as you move up the scale, there is more of something or less of something. I have AD here stands for agree-disagree. Agree-disagree items are extraordinarily common in survey research on the telephone, um, on in internet surveys. You're asked, you're given a statement, let's say, that it's about Obamacare. Um, and so, uh, I believe Obamacare is a good thing. Do you agree or disagree with the statement? And then among those who disagree and among those who agree, it's common in survey research to divide, to ask them a subsequent question and say, do you strongly agree or not so strongly agree? And to the people who disagree, it's common to ask, do you strongly disagree? Or do you not so strongly disagree? At the end of the day, you've got a four-category measure that indicates increasing degrees of agreement with whatever the statement was. Increasing levels of agreement um, and order. What you don't have in this four-category measure, let's say number one, two, three, four, is any sense of the distance between one and two relative to the distance between three and four. It's going to depend on how people interpret uh, the questions. <clears throat> As we move to interval level, this distance between categories is going to become meaningful. In fact, it is the definition of interval level. Interval level scales. On interval level scales, the distance between adjacent categories is not just known, but it's equal. Um, not just known, but equal. The distance between adjacent categories is not just known, but you can have a couple examples to run through, and I said also to say something about these last two. Um, the distance between categories on both these, ratio and interval level scales, the distance between categories, known and equal, adjacent categories, known and equal, uh, but the scales themselves can be arbitrary. And as you can transform them, you can choose what measure of temperature you want, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Um, <clears throat> both of those are interval level measures. Two degrees higher Celsius is, if you start from 30 and go to 32, is equal to two degrees higher Celsius if you started at uh, 14 and went to 16. And the same uh, analogy, analogy can be said of, of Fahrenheit as a measure of temperature. 
Fahrenheit scale when the distance between 34 and 36 degrees is equal to the distance between 90 and 92 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, the kind of weather we experience often in, in, in Mississippi. Altitude, likewise, um, is an interval level measure. It's distance, but you can choose your point as to how do you measure it, feet or, or, or meters. If you choose feet, um, it's true that 40 feet tall um, is distant from 60 feet tall in the same way 160 feet tall is distant from 140 feet tall. Uh, the intervals are comparable, they're fungible, uh, and they're known, and the adjacent ones uh, are equal. If you choose meters, you can go another way. What these two things, temperature, as I've spoken of it, and altitude, uh, have in common is they, they have zero points that really aren't genuine zero points. What I mean by genuine is indicating the absolute lack of something. The absolute lack in particular of what it is that you're trying, you're trying to measure. The Fahrenheit scale, that should be perfectly obvious. Zero on the Fahrenheit scale is, is arbitrary. It's just arbitrary. Nothing particularly happens at zero except you get very, very, very cold. It's not quite as obvious that degrees Celsius is not a genuine zero point. Uh, because something happens, it's um, a useful zero point, something happens at zero at sea level. At zero degrees Celsius, water will, will freeze. So something happens, but zero on the Celsius thermometer is not the lack of temperature. Uh, and that's the category, that's the sort of distinction that's going to move us from ratio, I mean, excuse me, from interval to, to ratio momentarily, is where ratio level variables have um, have absolute zeros. They have uh, zeros that indicate the lack of something. Altitude, similarly, uh, once you get to sea level, you can still go further down. It's not that you're, it's just that the zero there is, is completely arbitrary for where the water is, um, but you can, if you've been to New Orleans, you've actually been below sea level and you've been hopefully dry. <coughs> Next up, ratio has all the attributes of the interval level measure. That is, the distance between the categories, if they're adjacent, is known and equal. Uh, it can be arbitrary. It's got a real zero point indicating a lack of something. You say, might say, want to say, I didn't list Kelvin as a measure of temperature, even though physicists who work with, and um, other scientists who work with the Kelvin scale of temperature do reference absolute zero and make a point, perhaps, that at absolute zero, there is no energy. That's only true in the macroscopic sense, as it turns out, um, as a very, very, very small, um, a small size in quantum physics, you can show that you, you do have some energy, but more importantly, you can't get there. Uh, so, um, in practice, it's only a theoretical. The Kelvin scale, the absolute zero, is only a theoretical place where physicists and other experimenters try to go as close as they possibly can. So I use money and age. Zero means something if on age. It means you, you're not, there is no you. Um, zero means something with respect to money. It means the absolute lack of it. So these are or ratio level scales because they fit all of the characteristics that are associated with interval level scales and they also have absolute zeros that reflect the lack of what it is that you're trying to measure. Once more though, these are, these are arbitrary, the, word, the scale choice is arbitrary because you can denominate money as you know in United States dollars, or you can do it in euros, or you can do it in lira, you can do it in pesos, um, and in every case relative to points on those scales, the distances are known and fungible, it's just a cross scale that are different. So, leads us to absolute, this is not in most textbooks, and a couple of your other references to levels of measurement are not going to have any reference to it. It is in, um, in, in the Sorrel reference, along with another that I thought not quite as important, um, log interval. Log interval, an example would be miles per gallon. Absolute is pretty important as a distinction to be left out so often in so many textbooks. People 
argue about um, whether we should send students to Wikipedia. Most social science textbooks leave out the distinction between absolute levels of measurement, the absolute level of measurement and ratio, and even even interval. What is the absolute level? It's not arbitrary. The scale is not arbitrary, and it can't be transformed. You can take data uh, measured at the ratio level and multiply everybody's score by two, uh, including their income. And the distance between them relative on the same scale, the distance between what used to be 20 and what used to be 40 uh, will, still be, will still be equal. Uh, absolute, absolute measures um, don't have that characteristic. You can't transform them. They lose all their meaning if you multiply them by anything other than one. That is, if you multiply them by anything that would transform them outside their, their current existence. You might not be able to read this. I have two examples. One is probability and the other is counts. Probabilities are defined inside the interval of zero and one. And you can't have a negative probability and you can't have a probability of one point. One, you can't transform a probability. It is an absolute, an absolute measure. Counts, think of these characters not as students, but as parents. And think of this variable not as rank, uh, but instead as number of children. So count of the number of children. Uh, you can't transform that either. It is what it is, and it sits on its scale, which is not arbitrary. Does have a true zero point. Um, so so does probability. These have true zero points. They have the distance characteristics of in ratio and interval level measures, but they cannot be transformed. Um, sort of the ultimate level of measurement. I'm going to come back and talk about some of the subtleties of these distinctions in a little more calm environment. But you need to have all these definitions then, sort of wrote, so that you can. Repeat them and also identify if I tell you what at what level is a measure, uh, temperature measured in Fahrenheit, that you know that that's interval, not ratio, and not ordinal. And I'm going to spend some time talking about an interesting measure, a very common one in political and social science, two category measures, um, two and only two category measures, and talk about where those fit in this scheme, if they fit there at all. More minutes.